Well, good afternoon. It is Thursday the 6th of June and I'll give you a plot update. Well, plots update. Okay, so I'll take you to S6 first. S6 is the little orchard, uh, the little uh, small plot I got, which is about 30 foot by about 20 foot. Um, I'm just this this year. I'm just keeping the the grass trimmed in this area. It's a nightmare with that mare's tail in here. Uh, this first fruit tree is uh, a plum called Czar. The far one is uh, Golden Delicious, and this tree in this right-hand corner is um, uh, Cox Orange Pippin. And now we're in M9. Just hand round M9. I've started trimming in here as well. Uh, in these nets here, in this bed, uh, we have ground cabbage and we also have golden eagle cabbage in this bed. Uh, in this bed here we have, I think it's Eve, Evesham Special, Evens, Evesham Special Sprouts and also Purple Sprout and Broccoli. And along this little border here I've got uh, moon, uh, Moonlight Shadow Gladioli and I've got some dahlias as well and also you can just about see it in that little space there up against the fence we've got um, honeysuckle haliana to show you the fruit bushes and uh, these black uh, currant bushes were kindly donated by uh, Nick um, from Nick's allotment diary uh, so they're doing really well uh, especially this first one it's got uh, lots of uh, currants on as you can see then there's a black currant bush next to it, which Nick kindly donated to. Uh, we've got red currant here. We've got a red gooseberry here. And we've got uh, a gooseberry here in this corner as well. In this bed we've got uh, rhubarb. And also we've got uh, some tower lilies, um, honeymoon, and another one called Pretty Woman. There's no sign of them yet, anyway. Uh, no sign of them showing at all. Right, so S6 over there, M9 here. So we'll go across the communal path, and I'll show you what's been going on in M12. I've brought some sunflowers along with me today so where the alliums are in this bed uh, I'll keep the alliums in there and um, plant a few of those uh, sunflowers in this little section here the herb bed's doing really well we've got uh, uh, lemon thyme, we've got common thyme we've got um, rosemary, sage and lavender Some of the moonlight shadow gladioli are starting to show, uh, quite tall at the moment. And also in this bed we've got um, crimson uh, flowered uh, broad beans as well. And in this corner here uh, you can just see a Jerusalem artichoke uh, poking through. And also it's being shaded out a bit here by this shrub. Uh, we've got two New Zealand ochre plants which are doing really well as well and bushed up really nice. In this bed another kind donation from Nick from Nick's allotment diary. We have strawberries and they're all doing really well in this little bed here. There you go. And in this bed here, the Acrodulce, which I uh, planted in the autumn, uh, late October, has given us a magnificent harvest. Uh, we've uh, been eating them for the last uh, week and a half now. I've still got plenty of them. And also, uh, we've been giving them to um, uh, close family members as well. You can see they're huge, aren't they? Oh, there's loads left in there. There's a whole jungle of them. So they're doing really great. Um, I had a bit of a disaster in this bed here. Uh, I had some Scarlet Emperor runner beans and only I planted them, uh, was it last week I think it was, as young plants which I uh, br brought up in the, um, uh, 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 the polytunnel back at home. 
and um, one of them survived but after a couple of days they went a, a yellow colour and died off so what I've done is I've uh, directly sown um, uh, Scarlet Emperor beans again in this particular bed. These two little plants here are evening primrose and there we have um, it was an old packet I had uh, in my shed back at home uh, and uh, there was um, some uh, sweet corn in it so I tried them and most of them germinated so that's sweet corn in that bed. As you can see here we've got salsify or salsify I think whatever you uh, want to call it. Um, that's doing really well uh, that's standing about 12 inches tall now and uh, doing really good. I uh, planted some beetroot the other day as well uh, the fennel's doing re really good as well. That's great. Uh, the potatoes, which are... Let's have a look. Casablanca, uh, which is the first early potato. They're doing great as well. So, as you can see, they're doing great. And the Casablanca potatoes are doing great too. Uh, I've got leeks in here, I'm just about to see them, there's uh, groups of them dotted about, so I'm going to keep them uh, in groups of about four or five. Uh, they were got at um, when I first put them in after a couple of days, but I've, I think there's about a 60-70% success rate with them. Uh, the onions are doing great as well. And the red onions too, and also the different varieties of garlic I've got there. Uh, I stuck uh, my finger into the side of one of the garlic uh, yesterday. I'm not sure which one it was, but um, I put my and about an inch round uh, was the garlic bulb. It was uh, quite big, and one or two of them are quite quite big bulbs underneath the soil. This bed has got the hunter hunter squash in. There's one, two, three. There's also some more sweet corn in that corner and also a courgette zucchini in this uh, corner here. Uh, since I last did a video I have acquired uh, this plot which I'll show you around uh, in a minute and it's uh, plot M15. So I've created an opening and it takes you to the shed I've called the wonky shed because it's uh, out of line and the door's upside down but it's keeping me sheltered from the rain for the time being. I've got a couple of chairs in there. I cleared all this space yesterday. That shrug, uh, well, that stand uh, will come in handy as well. What I like about this, you can see it's got a little lean, lean to as well. So you can get uh, one of the chairs underneath there. It's come with two water butts as well. That's another view of the shed from this angle, and looking back up uh, M12. And as you can see, it is like a wigwam feature here, and it's got a, a grapevine. Um, so I need to train that a, a, a bit better than it is now. So, um, the leftover cabbages and uh, kale I've got at home will, can go into this bed, which was covered up by the, uh, the last occupants. Uh, so that can be a job that can be done in the very near future. There's also an established rhubarb bed just over here. There's a pen of some description here. Uh, so I'm thinking of moving the pond from right at the top there and bringing it down and putting it in this position here. This was a handy sort of frame uh, that was left here. Um, it's, it's like a miniature, uh, well, it's quite a big cloche really. So I'm thinking of um, growing strawberries under that uh, in a, a location in M, back in M9, further up there, um, and grow strawberries on the netting. And uh, I don't know what to do with these spaces yet. So we come down to this section. So there's plenty of potential for this, and there's the views again. There looks like a wild rose in the hedgerows there. Oh, I love the, all these old rickety sheds and little orchards. Fantastic. 
so that's looking back up and you can just see the garlic and onions so at the bottom of the plot there's a little gate that leads in so and they've left a, a nice little sign welcome sign so i'm going to tidy up all this area here and uh, do as much as i can in my newly acquired plot M15. There's a structure here, looks like a compost, uh, wooden compost bin area. Uh, well, composted area, sorry. So, yeah, uh, from this bottom right hand corner here, yeah, it's uh, just under 100 feet up to the little blue shed, and it's about uh, 25 30 foot wide. But uh, there's loads of potential here. So, yeah, there's a peach tree here as well. It's got like peach curl or some description on it, and it's been left out all through the winter as well. So yeah, looking forward to making a start in here. Well, I've already made a start yesterday, clearing all these weeds and things here, and shrubs and all sorts of things. So yeah. Okay then, we'll say bye from now.